Good morning. I didn't put a shirt on today. And that represents everything that I do, or lots of things that I do, represent a symbolic message. And if there's a symbolic message in what I'm going to be talking about today, it's naked honesty. The raw truth. Emotionally, intellectually, spiritually, physically, the raw truth. The title is 2012, When Human Courage is Met with E.T. Excuses. I have no doubt that E.T.'s are real and are here in massive numbers. Supposedly they honor free will, yet it seems that the free will of the dark forces is honored to a much greater degree than that of those that want to make a real difference and bring peace with justice to planet Earth. The psychopaths are allowed to make a visible show of force at will, but that ability is repeatedly denied to peacemakers. Today I will share my feelings with what happened and what did not happen yesterday. Both Steve Beckow's Cosmic Joyride, aborted Cosmic Joyride, and the Project Camelot interview. Yesterday was a rough day for me. I was fine when I did my video. Very optimistic, but as the hours passed in the day, my spirits dropped lower and lower and lower. For one thing, I watched a video, actually, what, three or four parts of a video, of a man pulled over for a traffic stop in Great Britain without a license and without having his driver's license or registration, etc., and ended up being arrested. That did not make my day because I'm in those same shoes. Not that a cop has pulled me over, but I know that the cops do not honor the law, and they don't, they're, not, they're not even taught to understand the law. And for the people that don't know, you don't know what I'm talking about. But I'm telling you, the government and the police forces are criminal organizations criminal organizations, lawless organizations, operating completely outside the law. And by the law, I mean natural law and law as recorded in the common law. The law is there to protect the people, but it's used to protect criminals in our culture. That's the truth. You can believe it or not. And by the way, if if anybody's expecting sugar coating and, and warm fuzzies from my talk this morning, you may as well turn it off now because I don't know if that's going to happen toward the end. I don't know where spirit's going to take me. I don't know if this is going to be a longer than normal video or not. I have no idea. All that I know is that yesterday I was dealing with my own raw emotions. And what was coming up was shadow stuff. And I allow shadow stuff to come up. I don't try to push it down. I don't try to turn it off. I don't try to sugarcoat it. I don't minimize it or maximize it. It is what it is. I feel it. I express truthfully what I feel. I was alone all day yesterday. I didn't make any phone calls. All day yesterday, I didn't talk to another soul from the time that I ended my video. Another soul, that is, visible soul. Somebody in a human form. I didn't talk to anybody like that. I did a lot of talking to, calling out to angels, to God, to Jesus, to the Holy Spirit, to Great Spirit, various names, asking to be purged, of everything that remains in me that's dark, 
and does not serve the highest good. I burned a fire for the second night in three days in my fireplace. I had two screwdrivers. I didn't get buzzed at all, not even a little bit. The alcohol was as if it was of no effect. I would have liked to have had a buzz. It didn't work that way. And that's been my experience. It oftentimes doesn't work. I remember one time I had people try to drink me under the table. And I may as well have been drinking pure water because the alcohol had zero effect on me. I've had similar situations where certain things that should have a certain effect did not have that effect on me. Even when I took the LSD on that one occasion, it did not have the anticipated effect. It just didn't. But anyway, I already knew before the Project Camelot interview with Bill Brock Brader, I already knew uh, that the ETs were a no-show again for Steve Beckow and crew. And it broke my heart again, just as it did when Blossom Goodchild was told and many other channeled channelers were receiving the same message that there was going to be a show of force on October the 14th, 2008, I believe it was. And it didn't happen. And yet there were literally hundreds of thousands of people sitting on their edge of their seats with anticipation. Now, I don't know if that was as true this time because it wasn't given enough advance notice. I mean, it was relatively quick in its uh, conception and non-performance. And I'm not going to fault Steve Beckow or any of the people involved. I am faulting God or the or Archangel Michael or whatever these channel or channeled beings are that are being channeled I am faulting them because the stuff that they're doing, the excuses that they're making are bullshit. They are bullshit. And that's my truth. And I'm not going to sugarcoat it. When Bill Brock Brader started talking about the criminality of the Las Vegas Police Department, I realize that the whole system is criminal. And I, and I and what came up for me in my emotional body was was the realization again about my personal situation with the law. I won my case in 2010. It was pulled from the docket, it was over. It was finished. I was feeling secure. Then I started doing these videos in 2011. And a few months later, I'm, I'm, I'm getting notified by the, by the attorney that I'm treading dangerous ground, an email from the attorney. And the next thing I know, they're trying to take my house. And I stopped it with a an appeal, and then they let the uh, the judge that I was appealing his his order, they let him write the opinion for the appeal case, and the three appeal judges concurred. That's conspiracy to deny due process of law. It's absolutely treasonous. And I have reached out to the Supreme Courts in both Florida and the United States, to the United States District Court, and they want me to dot my I's and cross my T's to their specifications. They're trying to put me in a box, and I won't go in that box. Now, I have exhibited extreme courage throughout my life, but especially in the past few years, as I've learned how the system works 
and how corrupt the governments are, the police forces are, the courts are. Everything in our culture is total corruption. And I've watched as the peacemakers, the people that want to bring a just world and a just society to this planet are thwarted time and again and often by failures of the angelic realm, the spiritual realm, to manifest in the physical realm. Now, I'm willing to take a stand, and there are lots of people just like me that are willing to take a stand against the tyranny, to stand up to the tyranny. I know, I, I hear, okay, don't, what you stand up against, what you resist persists. I hear all that bullshit. I hear it. We're willing to take a stand in truth, in law and order. We're willing to stand for what's right. And there is right and wrong in duality. Don't give me the bullshit that that's an illusion. It's not an illusion. It's something we have to deal with as human beings. And it's time that the gods, whatever they are, recognize our humanity and honor it. Those of us that are trying to do right and trying to do good, it's time that it's honored. I'm so sick and tired of the damned excuses that we, we want everybody to be safe. Give me a break. We are not safe if you keep falling down on the job and, and not following through with what you promised to do. I can go back to 1977 and some of my early poems crying out to God, putting God on the judgment seat. Why? Because I believed in the promises and they didn't work. And that's the truth. They didn't work. I went out on a limb by faith and the limb broke and fell and it didn't. And, and that which was promised was not manifested. And it's not manifested because my lack of faith. I wouldn't have even taken a step if I didn't have the faith to begin with. Now, is my faith pure? Now, that's always the excuse. Well, were there doubts? Yes, there's doubts. I'm human. And so is everybody else. And if there's either there's going to be grace that overlooks those weaknesses that, that are the result of lifetimes of conditioning in lack, conditioning in fear, conditioning in, in disappointment, conditioning in broken promises, conditioning in all sorts of ways. We've been conditioned to doubt because the extraterrestrials don't keep their word. Now, I have felt the peace and the joy in the Holy Spirit. I have been bolstered at times with great confidence and great power and great peace and great awareness. I've felt that. I've been on the mountaintop. I've climbed the mountain. But it's time for a show that we can have a show of force that's at least equal to the show of force of the dark forces. Otherwise, it's over. Game ended. And it ends in disaster. Now, I don't believe that that's the way it's going to be. Neither did Bill Brock, uh, uh, Brock Raider. He didn't believe that either. And, they, and the thing ended pretty well. I really liked the way that Project Camelot interview ended. I thought, I thought um, what's her name? Uh, uh, is it Carrie? No, no. What's her name? Uh, the lady there, the lady that did the interview. I, don't, I didn't appreciate that she didn't let it flow. She kept trying to change the direction of the flow. And I think the program would have been much better if she hadn't... Uh, Carrie Cassidy, that's what, what it is. Uh, it would have been much better if she allowed it to flow. Just let it flow. I, I, I appreciated them bringing up uh, Kathy O'Brien because this MK Ultra and mind control stuff is so relevant to what's happening in this world because the whole planet has been hypnotized and mind controlled. The whole planet, the whole human population has been affected. Even the light side. There is nobody that's immune from it. There are people that deny it. 
but it doesn't make it go away. It's still the truth. It's important that that was brought up. It's important that the corruption in our police departments and in our courts was brought up. It's important that we understand these things. But it's also important that the spiritual aspects of our lives are able to manifest. That we're able to literally stand in our power and meet force with force. And I don't mean that in a, in a way of destroying the dark. But I mean in a way of neutralizing the forces of the dark. We must be able to be empowered, whatever that means, whatever it takes, we must be willing to disempower the force that comes against us. We must be able to do what Anastasia or Anastasia did in the book three, it took two or three, I think it was book three in the, in the Ringing Cedars of Russia series where they, where the Russian uh, military came to take her into custody. And she was able to disintegrate rocks and to stop and to do the uh, matrix thing with the human shield that the bullets just bounce off and disintegrate before they hit her. We must be able to meet force with force or otherwise the game won't, won't turn out well. Now I know I've talked just a few days ago about leaving the how to God. And I'm doing that but I'm also expressing the truth and I'm I'm nakedly honest with you. I'm not going to try to sugarcoat the whole thing because what happened yesterday was a disgrace to the spiritual kingdom of heaven. It was a disgrace that they would make a promise and have all these people sitting in expectation waiting to be taken aboard a mothership and then they fail to follow through with what they promised to do. And there's no excuse there's no excuse reasonable or acceptable. We have power, but do we? Do we? Our free will is dishonored, and we are invalidated in what we choose to bring good to the planet. We are invalidated in that. And it's happened again and again in my personal life and in lots of people's lives. I don't know the answer. I'm venting. And if you don't like the venting, you're, I'm surprised you're still listening because I've been doing it the entire 17 and a half, almost 18 minutes. I've been venting. And I feel absolutely justified in my venting. It's time that the two hemispheres, the spiritual and the physical, come together within us and empower those of us that choose peace. That's our free will choice. And somebody's got to honor it. You honor the free will of these bastards that, that, that have awakened us. And that was brought out in the Project Camelot interview at the end by the young lady, I don't remember her name, and Bill. It was brought out by them. And, it, and, and there is going to be, and there needs to be, a unifying somehow. I don't know how. But the force that they are employing against those that are standing in truth, that has to be met with an equal and opposite force to neutralize it. It must become neutralized. And that has to be given to us. It's in me and it's in all of us. But it has to be activated and manifested. And I don't know how to do it. I don't have the confidence in myself to do it. But I want that confidence. I want that courage in me. Because what I believe in is good. I believe in love. I believe in peace. I believe that what's in us is greater than this bullshit that's in the world that has been used to, to enslave the entire planet and make this a prison planet. It's time to turn the tide. And I will raise my voice as long as I can. As long as I can, I will raise my voice and speak this truth. This is my truth. This is my, these are my feelings. These are my expressions. 
and thank you for listening. I really do appreciate my wonderful internet family that crosses all the continents and touches the nations of this world and people everywhere. Thank you. I love you. And yes, I love the spiritual realm, but it's time to get your shit together. Thank you. Namaste.